The fall of eastern Aleppo on the 15th of December 2016 set off a wave of hand-wringing and recrimination in the West. Who had allowed this to happen? How had we failed these people who had stood up for freedom in the Arab world? Uh, why were we helpless uh, to save the opponents of Bashar al-Assad uh, from the bombing of his air force and the Russian air force? We have to rewind uh, to understand where this conflict came from. Essentially, there was an Arab Spring which began not in Syria but in Tunisia and then spread around the Arab world of people more or less spontaneously standing up against uh, old authoritarian regimes, driven by economic frustration as well as desire for freedom. It caused a wave of sympathy in the West, but people in the West seem to be at, at a loss to know how really to support it. When the uh, revolt started in Syria, it rapidly became the mother of all proxy wars. Shia against Sunni Muslims, uh, Saudi Arabia against Iran, Iran against the United States, Iran against Israel, Israel against Iran, and uh, Russia against the United States and the United States against Russia. Perhaps a decisive moment in this whole thing was in the summer of 2013 when Barack Obama decided not to intervene militarily after the Syrian government had crossed a red line that he had set by allegedly using chemical weapons against its own population. The Russians, I think, watched that very closely and saw that now the field was open to them. They had their own strategic interests in Libya, in Syria. They had uh, a, a, a strategic port which their navy used, and they were able to expand it to an air force base as well. And the Russians uh, intervened in their new form of warfare without having to put many boots on the ground uh, and risk many Russian casualties. And so they were able to tilt the balance with the help of Iran and with the help of uh, Shia militias recruited by Iran from Afghanistan, from uh, Iraq and elsewhere. Uh, and tilt the balance and of course with the help of the uh, Lebanese Hezbollah militia which are allied with Iran as well. This has tilted the balance in the Middle East but it's left people in the West desperately asking why did we allow this humanitarian disaster to happen? What did we have a responsibility to protect these people? Who should we be protecting? What should we be protecting them from? And do we have any certainty that if we had intervened, it would have been more successful, um, less catastrophic than the Western interventions in Afghanistan, uh, in uh, Iraq, or in Libya? And it was because of those failed past interventions, I think, that Western governments held back and in the end uh, left the people of eastern Aleppo to their fate.